So right before we get started, you know what I'd love? It, uh, yeah, I do know. If people out there watching would like and subscribe, that would be great. Help I know we're out. asking ahead of time, and you haven't seen it, you may be like, this could be the worst video ever, but really it costs you nothing and it really helps us. Just hit that thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell, get all our videos first, and enjoy them with a friend. <laughs> Hi, I'm Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And woo, I feel good because We've had a string of bad shoes to review that we've been wearing, and this isn't one of them, and I've enjoyed the miles in it. So Rob, what am I holding in my hand? The Puma Velocity Nitro 2. That's a lot of words. It's not too bad, it's not a Skechers name. Yeah, I will say between my colorway and Robbie's colorway, the internet has chosen. We did two posts of these shoes. I mean, the likes on this one got dwarfed by the likes on this off-white. What do we got there? Yeah, this. so this is the first mile edition. Now this doesn't come out till April 1st, but they partnered with First Mile Impact, which kind of uh, is a charitable organization that helps uh, provide jobs for people who like cleaning up waste in communities and like lower uh, income communities around the globe. And then they kind of convert that waste to to make some Other other materials in the upper and so on. So love this colorway, fantastic. Walk us through it though, like this, that's the important thing. Yeah, so got. by the way, this is the women's colorway. So I've been wearing, I actually wore this one for like 20 miles. Do you know if it'll be coming in men's? Uh, I don't know actually, it's a good question. But they but better make it in men's because people been, love it. Yeah, I've been wearing it and loving it. Um, I call it oatmeal. Oatmeal, yeah. And it works well with this uh, gum sole out sole, which uh, we'll get to in a little bit. Yeah, let's talk about the uh, Nitro 2, Thomas. So last year we got a bunch of shoes in for Puma, a whole new lineup. They're back in the sport. We're like, okay, what do we got here? And of all the shoes that we tried, this one was probably my favorite. When people ask me, hey, what Puma should I get? I always went with the Velocity Nitro, mostly because I felt like it was the most versatile in the pack. Yeah, I mean, it had a great nitrogen infused midsole. It had the Puma grip outsole, probably the best grip in the game. And it was like 120 bucks, can't go wrong there. And yeah, Puma knocked it out of the park last year. I mean, with the exclamation point, Molly Saito ripping, the, ripping the bronze medal. So, and, the, and we were a little nervous, by the way, that this sophomore year- Sophomore slump? Yeah, sophomore slump. And uh, you know who didn't have a sophomore slump? Mm -mm. Uh, Weezer. They had Blue Album, Pinkerton. They kind of had like a junior slump though. Yeah, it was like, it was like in between. Like <laughs> they the ran green, out The Green slump. Album was like a little, they talked about that. Hip, <laughs> <laughs> We got our hash pipe. Sophomore slump we were a little bit worried about, but guess what? Well, I think we're good. I think we're in the clear. I think we're in the clear. Not only are we in the clear, this is an improved velocity. And yeah. we can go over why. I mean, just holding it in your hand, it feels a little more quality than the other one. I felt like the other one felt a little cheap. Yeah, I felt the same thing. Like last year's upper was the one thing that people had some issues with, which I kind of did too. It was like almost like plasticky, like in a weird yeah, way. Yeah, didn't have that great tactile touch. But this upper is nice. It's like, a real nice. upper. It is. I'll start with just I mean, you can't really get more comfort than the way that this sock liner works on it mm -hmm. and kind of gussets the tongue or saddles the tongue. I don't know what you call it, but from here down, you're pretty much in like a sleeve. Exactly, it wraps really well. Now, the one thing I will say is that I'm not sure how this is gonna feel in the summertime because there is a couple layers here. I felt like it was pretty breathable. And the other thing is, what do you call it? Is this like an articulated tongue? What do you what do you call the like ridges in it? Because uh, it fits really nicely over the ankle. Is that like a python articulate? Is that articulation or reticulation? I'm Age not very those, good with the science. Either of those words. <laughs> yeah. I think it's articulated. Yeah, sure, it's like a python. It uh, just wraps around you and until you squeezes it in good. Want to die? Yeah. <laughs> the, and the heel counter, everything feels great. Um, I had no problem with lift in this shoe. Mm -hmm. We know that the Deviate Nitro, people had problem with the heel counter. So you always get questions. Like even when we posted on Instagram, people want to know how's the heel counter. Heel counter feels great. The one thing I didn't love about it, Robbie, what was it? Uh, it runs a little long, which is an issue we had last year as well. Yeah. I don't know if it's a full half size long or what, but my toe comes right around here. Well, this is a half size smaller than I would normally wear, and it's still like a little still bit. Still a little like, Okay. Like maybe a tiny bit. So. so I guess we're gonna recommend maybe trying a half size down in the shoe and see if you get a better fit. 
Yeah, um, I think that's a good recommendation, Thomas. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah, sure. Appreciate the support there. <laughs> um, let's get down to the money maker. The bread and the butter. Yeah. The toast and the jam. Mm -hmm. Go with all of those things. Yeah. Let's talk about nitro, bro. So that's uh, the nitro foam is, it's the same thing they used last year, but I feel like it's softer this year, right? It has less of that styrofoam look on the actual foam. Yeah, like that nitrogen infused super critical thing where it looks like exactly like styrofoam. Yeah, a little styrofoam. This has a really smooth, creamy looking exterior, which mm -hmm. is interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> interesting way to describe a nitro. Describe. But it does. I mean, look at it. It looks like a, like, well, this looks like a latte or something you would get, right? Yep. And last year, it also had the EVA foam that's on the bottom half of this midsole. But last year, it was mostly in the heel. And then you kind of saw it come up underneath into some of the rubber. There's more of that EVA foam here creating contact. I think it does two things. It kind of stabilizes the nitro foam and gives you a more stable ride. And I don't know, this shoe just feels really cushy. And I'm thinking that as you come down onto the EVA, your foot's sinking into the nitro and taking off. And I have to say, this shoe feels super cushioned, more so than the stack height looks. It's not special in that way where it's bouncy, like you get like a crazy, you know, race shoe type feel or anything, but it's just like, as far as a daily trainer, it's like, a very solid, nice ride. If you want to pick it up, you can. For $120, it feels luxurious. Yeah, for sure. Luxurious, luxurious. luxurious. At that same price point, you're talking about like shoes like the Pegasus, the Rincon. You know what it kind of remind me of? The Nimbus 24. Kind of that, si that Flight Foam Blast has that nice, really, not a huge stack of cushion, but it just feels so sweet under the feet. Yeah. This has that too. Yeah, I felt the, maybe the Nimbus 24 is a little bit softer and bouncier, um, but this just has a nice all-around feel for, I don't know, racking up a lot of miles. We, we put in a decent amount of miles in this shoe already. Yeah, what's the stack? So the stack on this with the sock liner is 33 and a half uh, in the heel and 23 and a half in the forefoot. Hmm. Dropped up by two millimeters if you're taking out the sock liner, so. What's that, it still gives you a 10 millimeter drop, right? Well, what's weird is on the spec sheet it says eight millimeter drop without the sock liner. I'm like, that makes no sense because that would mean there's... Well, wait, it does make sense because the sock liner is oh, no, one... that's true, that's true, yeah, yeah. One Let thickness. I'm not sure if you <laughs> said something about it already or not, but the outsole, Puma Grip. This is one of your favorites. More like Puma Rip. Yeah. You can really rip it around corners in this thing. I mean, I love the gum sole on this shoe. Like we already said, it's a beautiful... Like, can we just put gum soles on everything? I do like gum soles. <laughs> I don't know. I think then we'll be like, ah, oh, they played out. Yeah. But for right now, gum soles look great on just about every shoe. What outsole does this remind you of, though, pattern-wise? I don't know. Maybe a winged horse of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, if you did that thing where you walk along the beach and guess what shoes people are wearing, you'd think this is a Pegasus right off the bat. This has a little bit of a more aggressive knobbiness to the front toe. Mm -hmm. And when we were talking to Puma, they said, that was specifically for being able to take this on buffed out trails, like maybe more gravelly roads to give it a better traction on that. Well, it's funny surface. because I always recommend someone who's looking for like a literally do everything shoe is the Pegasus because a lot of people like running trails in Pegasus mm -hmm. because of the similar uh, pattern on the outsole. And so I agree, absolutely. The Puma Grip's always been very solid. One thing I do have to say, if you look right here, Robbie, I do look right there and I see. I have 20 miles on these shoes and I, I don't know, I kind of sanded off this corner here. I am kind of working with a foot issue and I'm not sure if it's throwing off my stride. If it's throwing off my stride and I'm going more to the back and I'm not used to it, I might be dragging my heel a little bit more than usual. So other than a little bit of scraping on the rubber, I gotta say the front end doesn't look like any wears on it at all. <laughs> any wears, underwears? None of the wares. No abrasion. So this is a women's eight and a half slash men's seven. Like I said, it's a little, runs a little small. It's eight and a half ounces, 240 grams. So my size 10 and a half weighs 10.2 ounces or 288 grams. Pretty nice for daily trainer. Yeah, I mean, it's right in there. You don't need to have it be super light. And with all this cushion and the feel, I really like the ride of the shoe. When I'm running in it, I felt my foot was protected. It felt great. 
I didn't have any trouble picking up the pace in this. I did some faster runs in it. I did some slower runs in it. Both speeds felt really nice. For 120 bucks, I can't think of much better deal than you can get for this shoe. Assuming it goes for 300, 400 miles, should be good. So Robbie, I think we're both gonna agree on this shoe. Let's give it the green light. All right. You saw that? Mm. <laughs> That's happening now. That's happening. <laughs> All right. So anyways, this shoe comes out on February 1st, which has already happened for $120. Uh, get it while you can, because obviously we've seen in the past some uh, Puma shoes fly off the shelves and then we never know when they're going to come back. So yeah, with this year, with the way that things are shipping and getting in, if you can find a shoe you like, <laughs> right. you might as well grab it. And uh, this one comes out April 1st. I'm not sure if it's still 120 bucks for this edition. It might might be a little bit different since then. If it's a little more, I'd still pay it because I like that oatmeal. It's clean like, as hell. It looks, it looks like you could eat that. It's like a cake. I mean, I've tried. Yeah. I had indigestion. This is your key lime pie. That's your, I don't know, coffee cake. Oh, yeah, I like some coffee All cake. Right. Coffee cake. There's also a plum color that we can show you right here. Plum crazy purple. Yeah. This is the color of uh, Joe Dirt's Camaro. Yeah. If you like, this is also the women's version. So check it out. Plum crazy. Mm hmm Cocoa nuts. Key lime. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the review. Robbie, other than our podcast, our Instagram, our Facebook, our Strava group, where else can people find us? Um, our do we say podcast? Yeah. Oh. How about the streets of Baltimore? That's good. Yeah, you can find <laughs> us at our HQ and any party we have here. Hopefully, some more coming in the future. Oh, definitely. Um, do, are we doing anything? We're um, before this video comes out. Any cool events? I don't know. But yeah, if you're in Baltimore, come say hello. Hit us up on Instagram, and we'll run with you. Saturdays we run on with the Fast Ambassadors. Thursday night we have a new run club that leaves here. That's headed up by Young Brandon. Come meets at, I think, 6.30. What, 6.30. They go for a nice little run. They grab some beers in the headquarters afterwards, talk about the run, talk about life. Sometimes just stare at each other while they drink beer. Yeah, real creepy stuff. Yeah. All right. You so know, like the kids do these days. Probably Bitcoins and NFTs. Yeah. TikTok in, <laughs> Netflix in, Hulu in. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hooting and hollering. <laughs> Raw high. Is that is that a camera? That is a camera. Okay. It's fancy technology. Yeah. All right. Love that shit. Shut you guys down. <laughs> All right. Robbie will be right back. In the meantime, you got a little intermission with Thomas. Does my jacket seem too swishy? I don't know. People say you might be able to hear it on the microphone. I'm guessing you can't. What do you think, Brandon? Brandon's silently behind the camera going, what are you doing? Why are you here? Are we doing a shoe review? All this extra time is just more stuff I gotta edit. And I'm like, sorry, bro. <laughs>